Let me tell you everyone, this video was a struggle. My nose was so overwhelmed with musk. I was really doubting my own sense of smell by the end of it because everything smelled the same. But that's exactly why I wanted to do this for you because I love you and I'm just the best like that. Today we are going to talk about Narciso Rodriguez fragrances. And if you don't know, Narciso Rodriguez really focuses on musk. That is his main thing, this delicious, warm, creamy, sensual musk. And it's really hard to choose, in my opinion, because there are so many different flankers. There's so many different Narciso Rodriguez fragrances. How are we supposed to know which one to choose? So I wanted to hook you guys up with the tea and show you exactly which fragrances are good, bad, ugly, which I love, which I care less for. So I went through about, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oy nine Narciso Rodriguez fragrances and I'm going to rate them on a scale from one to ten based on my own personal experience. If you are new to this channel, my name is Steph. Welcome. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all the support and if you like my content, like and subscribe down below. Follow me on Instagram and let's get to it. The first fragrances I want to start off with from Narciso Rodriguez are the for her, the OGs, probably the best selling from the line. So the first we have is the For Her EDP. Uh, and this is the one in the pink bottle. And it can be a little confusing because the EDP is in the pink bottle and the EDP is in the black bottle. And you would kind of get confused because you would think EDP black, right? No. The EDP has rose and peach at the top, musk and amber in the mid, and patchouli and sandalwood in the base. And I have it right here on my hand. This is just primarily a sensual musk. It's very powerful and very strong. And it wasn't one of my favorites from the bunch. To be honest, I really don't get many of the other notes besides musk. It's just this very strong, creamy, sensual musk. It's primarily just centered on that, uh, but it's a really nice musk. Like, as far as musk goes, it's nice. I gave this fragrance a six out of 10, just because some of the other ones we're gonna talk about, I really felt were more unique. And it just, you know, it's musk. And it wasn't as fluffy and light, as sweet as I had hoped it would be. So the EDP for her, I gave a six out of 10. Next up, we have the EDT, and this one I actually enjoyed a little bit better, although they're very similar. Yeah, so for her, EDT has orange flower, osmanthus, and bergamot at the top, so it has some more sweet florals at the top than the EDP. Musk and amber in the base, same mid as the, as the uh, EDP, and vetiver, vanilla, and patchouli in the base. So this one has that added kind of uh, sweet florals at the top, and it has that added addition of vanilla at the base, which I really think gives this flanker a more light, fluffy, sweet vibe than the EDP. Yeah, I much prefer the EDT. It's more feminine, it's less musky, and you can get those other notes. It's lighter, it's sweeter, it's fluffier. If you like the EDP, but it was a little too sharp, a little too musky for your nose, I recommend the EDT. This was definitely my preferred, and I gave the EDT an eight out of 10. I really enjoyed this fragrance. Furthermore, most of these fragrances have incredible longevity and sillage. They're really high performing, high quality fragrances, and you can definitely see the oil when you spray it on yourself, which is what I want to see. Next one I tried was Fuller Musk. Now this is the one in the pink bottle, the dark pink bottle. And this is one that's more centered around florals as the name suggests. So in the top, we have pink pepper. In the mid, we have rose, musk, and peony. In the base, we have patchouli, violet, and amber. So there's a lot more florals in this. There's pink pepper at the top. And I only gave this one a three out of 10, guys. I was really not a fan of Fleur Musk. It was too heady, too floral, and too mature for me. 
I though although I don't like mind florals and I don't like mind musk there needs to be some sandalwood or some vanilla to cut through that kind of those sharp edges and this one was just too floral heavy for me um and it just wasn't my vibe it was a little mature and it's not it doesn't have that fluffy sensual sweetness that a lot of the other flankers have so yeah if you're not a big fan of heavy floral fragrances I would steer clear of Fleur Musk. It was not my jam. The next one I tried was Poudre. This is the one in the little square light pink bottle. And Poudre has jasmine, rose, and orange blossom in the top. So it does have some more sweet florals at the top. And then there's musk in the mid and coumarin, cedar, vetiver, and patchouli in the base. I thought this was a really nice flanker. There's something very fluffy, airy, and delicate about this flanker. I think that's how it was supposed to be with the name Poudre in the bottle. It just seems like it would be the more cloud-like of the flankers. I gave Poudre a 7 out of 10. I thought it was very delicate. It wasn't too musky. It wasn't too sharp. I think this is a wonderful everyday fragrance. I mean, all of these are extremely versatile. Like You could literally wear them anywhere. And I think that's the beauty of Narciso Rodriguez fragrances. But this one is especially feminine. It's especially likable. I can't see anyone really being offended by this fragrance ever. It's just, uh, you know, light, airy, fluffy, a little bit of sweet from those florals. And I think it's a very well-balanced fragrance. So if you want an ultra feminine kind of toned down version of the Narciso fragrances, I would recommend checking out Narciso Poudre. The next one I tried was Ombre, and I think this is a fairly new release. It's in the Peach Square, and this is one that's more centered around tropical florals, which I'm a big fan of. I love tropical fragrances, and this I found to be one of the most different flankers of the whole range. It's very unique. So in the top of Ombre, we have Frangipani, Ylang Lang, and White Flowers. So we have all those gorgeous tropical yellow and white flowers, Musk and Amber in the mid, and then we have Cashmere Vanilla, and Cedar in the base. So we have that added addition of Cashmere and we have that vanilla. I really enjoyed Ombre. It's very powdery and cocooning, and you get a big dose of those yellow flowers. It definitely has a tropical touch, and I think this would be a gorgeous fragrance for the summer months. If you love the Narciso vibes, but you find that in the heat, the original musks may be a little too heady, try the Ombre. It's it's lovely. It's very feminine. It's very powdery. It's very fluffy. It's tropical. It's definitely a heavy floral fragrance. So if you don't like floral, I don't think you'll like ombre. But if you like tropical flowers, I can't see why you wouldn't enjoy this. I gave ombre a 7 out of 10. It is a little floral for what I usually go to. I wish the vanilla was a little kicked up and the florals a little kicked down, but I did find it very pleasant and I enjoyed it a lot more than some of the other flankers. So a seven out of 10 for ombre. Next up, we have one of my personal favorites. This is Rouge and this is in the dark red sexy square. In Rouge, we have Iris and Rose at the top. We have musk, tuberose, and orange blossom in the mid. And then the vanilla in the base, we have tonka, vanilla, white cedar, white cedar extract, sandalwood, and vetiver. So we have tonka, vanilla, cedar, and sandalwood in the base. And this is the first one where we're seeing rose and tuberose. So this one definitely strays from the other flankers. I think this is definitely a spicy rose fragrance. And it's interesting because I usually don't like those kind of fragrances, but this is done in such a beautiful, sensual, sexy way. I think there's a darkness, a woodiness to this fragrance. The spiciness is there, but it's not too much. And the rose is there, but it's not too mature or too heady. It's a beautiful, soft, powdery rose with that woodiness and that vanilla. I think this is definitely one of the sexiest of all of them, and I think it was intended to be that. If you want something mature but sexy, and you want to level up from the regular Narciso fragrances, 
I definitely recommend trying the Rouge EDP. This is the one I'm talking about, EDP. It is definitely a head turner and I think it's dark and mysterious and a very well done rose musk fragrance in a way that's not too mature or grandma. So I gave Rouge EDP an 8 out of 10. I love that one. It was definitely one of my favorites from all of the ones I tried. Next up we have the Rouge EDT. So the Rouge EDT, funnily enough, was not nearly as good as Rouge EDP, and I haven't really seen many people talk about the EDT, so maybe that's why. Rouge EDT has Rose and Lily of the Valley at the top, Musk in the mid, and Tonka, Cedar, White Cedar, and Vetiver in the base. And I have it right here. Yeah, see, this one to me smells very much, for some reason, like the OG, the EDP. It's very clean. It's very primarily musky. And it's missing that vanilla and that sandalwood that's in Rouge. And I think something about it is just not as sweet, not as sexy as the EDP. I really wasn't that big of a fan of this one. It didn't do much. I, f I found that it kind of fell flat for me. Um... You would think the EDT would be a lighter, sweeter, fluffier version of the EDP. And it, you could say it's lighter and less floral, but it's definitely not as sexy. It's definitely not as unique. And I don't know, I just wasn't a huge fan of this. So I gave Ro Rouge EDT a 6 out of 10. So the EDP an 8 out of 10. Wow, I love it. So sexy. The EDT, a 6 out of 10. Not great. I highly recommend sticking with the EDP when it comes to the Rouge Flankers. Two more guys. I told you my nose was busy. I mean, the things I do for you people, whoo. The next one I think was my favorite of the whole bunch. And this surprisingly is Musk Noir. I had never really even heard of this one. I don't see many people talk about it, but I really enjoyed this flanker. So in Musk Noir, there's plum at the top, musk and heliotrope in the mid and suede in the base. So we're seeing a completely different composition than all of the other flankers. We have the plum, which gives it this fruitiness in the beginning, which I really enjoy. And then you definitely get that suede, but it's not an overwhelming suede. It's just a sweet deepness that adds complexity and depth to this fragrance. And I think this is one of the first fragrances from the line that the musk, I think, kind of takes a back seat. And it's more about that suede and that plum. And there's a sweetness to this fragrance that I really enjoy. Furthermore, I think this is a unisex fragrance. I think a man could definitely pull off Musk Noir because of that leather note. It adds a sexiness and a unisex vibe. And maybe that's why I enjoy this fragrance probably the most out of all of them because it has that sweetness, but it has that dark, sexy, unisex vibe and it's not too musky. I think this is such a gorgeous, intoxicating, sexy fragrance. I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. Let me know in the comments, have you guys tried Musk Noir? And what were your thoughts? Because I feel like I'm the only one who loves this fragrance, but I thought it was really delicious and unique. So I gave Musk Noir an 8.5 out of 10. The last Narcissa Rodriguez fragrances that I got my nose on was Pure Musk. And as you can probably tell by the name, this is just about the musk. And this is probably the strongest, most punchy musk out of all of the flankers I tried. So in Pure Musk, it's very simple. In the top, we have musk. In the mid, we have flowers. And in the base, we have cashmere ran. And I hate to say it, guys, but I really did not enjoy this flanker. It's really heady and strong. It's the Narciso Musk dialed all the way up. I mean, I am not a big enough fan of Musk to wear something that's this musky. In the other flankers, the Musk is more beautifully blended and you get more of the other notes. It kind of just enhances everything, but this is all about the Musk. And there's kind of a sharpness about it. And I also think this is the most mature smelling out of all of them. It's just not my vibe. I can't do with that much musk. It's overwhelming to my nose. I know people really like this. I've heard Demi Rawling talk about how she adores pure musk, but it's a no-go for me. I can't handle it. If you are a diehard musk fan and you just live for those musky vibes, 
you probably will enjoy it because it's a beautiful Narciso musk, but it's just not blended enough with other notes for my nose to be able to tolerate it, unfortunately. So just a little recap, my favorite of the whole bunch were uh, the Rouge EDP. It's a sexy iris rose with a little bit of woodiness and vanilla. And then Musk Noir, which is this fruity leather musk fragrance, which is so unique and so sexy. I really also enjoyed Ombre, which is a tropical yellow flower take on the musks, and Poudre, which is the lightest, fluffiest, most feminine of the bunch. So I hope you guys got some knowledge from this video. I hope you're just a little less overwhelmed with all these flankers, and now you have some direction of which Narcissa Rodriguez fragrance is right for you. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.